Here I had drawn a chicken prior to painting and took graphic excess with a needed eraser with dabs motion. Started wetting the paper, do not overdo it. I started spotting areas that are darker by observing my reference photo. By doing this, I am setting my first layer as a base for my later contrast details. As you see, I use Dove Gray for my first layer and if I want to create a darker tones, simply use less water on my brush. Observation is a key for these first layers as it will help you get a more realistic illustration. When you apply the water and the paint, the wet on wet technique will help you get a soft look on the transition of colors. Now, as you see, I am getting a second layer to emphasize even more the darker spots of my illustration. I am using blueberry blue or you can find it as a navy blue with a bit of black. Here the observation is important as I will be doing the first layer for my feather effects. So I had to really observe where exactly they were situated so at the end my illustration would not look odd. For the chicken legs, I use a combination of sand and mango colors. If you don't have these specific ones, it's okay. Just use a pale yellow and orangey tones. While the chicken legs dry, I start wetting the base that will represent the ground. For this, I use sand color or a pale yellow. While it's still wet, I do shadow effects with cocoa color or a darker shade of brown. Keep in mind, as it dries, the color will become lighter. And as you wait on one area to dry, you can work on another area. Here I go back to the chicken legs for a second layer to intensify the colors. I use sand color and orangey tones. While the chicken legs dry, I move on to the chicken body and work on intensifying the grays. While the chicken dries, I start working on the ground producing some shadows and darker tones with cocoa colors or a shade darker of brown. Now it's time to move to the head, which I use sand color to apply a base to the head of the chicken. As you see, while I wait for the chicken head to dry, I keep on working on the layers, producing some shadows on the feathers of the chicken. Here I use darker tones of gray by adding a little bit of blue to my gray tones. At times, I use black mixed with blue and gray if I want deep shadows.
while my feathers dry, I'll go ahead and move on to the upper part of the body of the chicken and start contrasting even more the colors and the shadows of the feathers at the top of the chicken. Now that the chicken head has dried, I start dimensioning with a red color and producing some spotting of shadows. I used a deeper yellow for the beak and some other areas around the head and also to deepen the shadows of the chicken legs. Also use a more red tones to be able to uh, produce some shadows and some dimensions on the head and around uh, the parts of the head. While the chicken head dries, I went ahead and moved on to the body producing some feather effects with darker tones of blue and blacks. To let that part dry, I went ahead and move, keep on moving to the rest of the feathers, the end of the chicken, with more darker tones using blue, darker blue tones, blacks and grays. Now that the chicken head is dry, I start doing um, other layers with deep red tones. I start defining more the details of the chicken head. While the chicken head dries, I went ahead and moved on to the legs, producing some shadows with darker brown. And then I went back to the chicken head, started doing some detailing and more specifics, stains or shadows. Here I used a darker shade of brown. Also used some deep red and bright reds. And while that dries, I'll go ahead and move on to the body and keep reducing shadows for the feathers. I'm still not done with the feathers. And that's all for now. Thank you so much for being here and watch my videos. I hope you learn a lot and I'll see you on my next one. Please visit all my social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I'll see you on the next one.